I haven't even tried to put this stuff in here yet. So I think I can fit all this into a 40 liter backpack, but we will see. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Dan Becker. Thanks so much for being here. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over my backpacking loadout for an upcoming backpacking trip. One of the more unique backpacking trips that I've ever been on because I'm gonna be doing some stuff I've never done before to a really cool place in Montana called the Beartooth Mountains. So this is my whole setup. Now I just want you to please keep in mind um, as we're kind of going through the gear, if you end up watching any video from that upcoming backpacking trip when those videos come out, things may change. So I think we should go over it one by one, show you everything that we're bringing, and, and I've got a bonus for you. That's right, I've got a bonus for you. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna pack it into my 40 liter backpack. So this is the Hyperlite Junction backpack. This is the backpack I've chose to bring on this trip because this gear is a lot heavier than what I normally bring. Um, and this backpack can handle up to 35 pounds comfortably. This is what I do. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put um, some sort of a dry bag in here. It's super important to put a dry bag in your backpack because as I have experienced, and I will link that video right here, total epic fail on my part water soaking through a backpack on a trip and I actually had to bail on it. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get like a, uh, a garbage bag, uh, some guys use a uh, trash compactor bag, uh, but in this case I've got one from Hyperlite Mountain Gear, it's just the one that fits in this bag really well. So we're gonna throw that in here. So what I'm gonna put inside of this bag is everything that I do not want to get wet if it's raining. My sleeping bag for instance. This one here is the Thermarest Hyperion uh, 20 degree bag and I have actually had this down to about 26 degrees and I was okay in it. The next thing I'm gonna throw in there is my sleep system. Uh, these are the, <laughs> the, when I say these, I bring two pillows, okay? I, I love my sleep, it's important to me. You guys are probably laughing at me right now, that's totally fine. I love pillows and I like real pillows. I've slept on those air pillows for many, many years. They were okay, but these are real pillows. Um, these are the Thermarest something something pillow. I don't remember what it is. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out how to tell you. But this is what it is. It lofts up pretty nicely. Bring two of them and I put them in next. The sleeping pad that I'm bringing on this trip is the Nemo Tensor Insulated. Uh, this is the regular wide length. I like wide sleeping pads for obvious reasons because you're not gonna roll off of it as much. This is a 25 inch wide pad, so that will go in next. And then lately I've been bringing uh, this here. This is the Outdoor Vitals Virtus, I think it's called, hoodie. Uh, this thing, if you have not looked into this yet, you absolutely need to. This thing is unbelievably awesome. It weighs like seven ounces and is extremely warm. It is almost too warm for a mid-layer. And I've had this down really, really cold, like into the 40s uh, with just a t-shirt on underneath, been totally fine. But it's lighter than any kind of like fleece that you'll ever bring. The next thing that'll go in is my mountain hardware. This is the Ghost Whisperer. This is the UL version, the ultralight version. This is the one that has a thousand filled down. Totally overkill, totally unnecessary, but because I already own it, I'm gonna bring it. It's extremely lightweight. This thing weighs about seven ounces as well. And this is also very, very warm. So that will go in next. Okay, now that's pretty much everything that I just absolutely do not want to get wet. Then I'm just gonna roll this dry bag up on the inside and make sure that that's all secure so that way water can't get in it. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pack in my food bag. Now this is just a stand-in. I don't have all my food in here yet. It's gonna be much more full, but we're going for, as of right now, we're going for four days. And so I will have a much bigger food bag, but that will go in next. Now I like to put my food bag as close to my back as possible, but I like to make sure that that food bag doesn't press up against my back. Uh, Cause sometimes food bags can hit, be kind of lumpy. So I'll put that in next. And you want to keep that weight uh, as close to your back as possible. Just kind of help that center of gravity. So you're not kind of falling backwards as you're hiking. It's really helpful. And then for cooking, um, I'm for the first time ever, I talked about this in a recent video. I'll put it right up here. I'm bringing a jet boil. Um, Kind of nervous about it, kind of excited about it. I'm very excited to at least, you know, expand my cooking possibilities. If it will fit inside of my food bag, I'll put it inside of my food bag, but I think it's gonna be pretty full. So in this situation, I'll just kind of put it off to the side, put that in there. Now, this is something brand new to me as well. And honestly, I'm not even exactly sure where I'm gonna put this or how I'm gonna even pack this in my bag yet. What I think I'm gonna do, uh, this is the MSR Quick Skillet. Uh, it's just a non-stick aluminum skillet, weighs about six ounces. 
uh, is I think I'm going to pack it inside of a Ziploc bag like this and I'll throw these utensils in there. Now you're looking at these, you're like, damn, that's total overkill. Why are you bringing all that stuff? Well, because I just wanna try these out. These are really lightweight, very lightweight. These are all uh, jet boil utensils. They just expand. Here's a spoon. Here's a small spatula. Uh, here's a fork. So I will put these inside the skillet. This is pretty cool. This uh, handle just kind of folds in on top of itself, just like that. And then I can go ahead, throw that inside the Ziploc bag so that it's nice and contained and then just toss that in. Uh, one more thing uh, that will go in my pack as well for every trip, no matter where I go, is uh, a bear hanging kit or a bear line. And all this is, is simply just a little bag and it comes with some line. And what you do is you, uh, you fill this bag with rocks or a rock or something to make it heavy. And then you're gonna tie this line to the bag and you're gonna throw the bag up over a branch so that way you can pull the line and uh, it will hoist up whatever you've tied to the other end of the line. Did that make any sense? Did that make sense? Yeah. Totally made sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> you're trying to hoist up your bear bag and this just gives you the ability to get the line up over a branch. And that's it, that's what that's for. And then you could obviously multi-purpose use this uh, cordage for other things as well. So that's gonna go in here. And this is my uh, ditty bag. Oh, by the way, my bear bag or my food bag and my uh, ditty bag were both made by a company called Hilltop Packs. And these are awesome. They will literally print anything you want on there. So I'm not like su super uh, egotistical and uh, my logo on bags just because I want people to know it's me. They literally just sent this to me just like this. And I thought when I saw this, this was, this was just really cool. So uh, I did not ask for that. That's how they sent it. It's awesome. So you can have like a picture of like your kids on here or your dog or your cat. Your cat. You could totally have a picture of your cat as well. Thank you. Inside of here, uh, there's going to be a lot of mosquitoes on this trip in certain parts of where we're hiking. So I've got my Sea to Summit head net. We can't have fires, but I always bring this anyway. I bring at least one Esbit cube. And these are just uh, fuel tablets. They're uh, good fire starters. Um, they're good for like if your canister, your gas canister runs out of fuel, this is an extra fuel source. Um, and just for emergency situations, if you absolutely need a fire, you can, you can make those with these. Uh, but we're not planning on having fires, but this will come with me anyway. Uh, and then I also bring chapstick. Chapstick is great, not just for your lips. You can also use this as a chafing cream. No, you don't directly apply this to your butt or your legs or whatever you're planning on applying it to. You can wipe this on like toilet paper first and then use your imagination. Okay, so that goes in there. Uh, and then also for a water treatment, uh, this is just a backup to what we're gonna talk about in a minute. These are uh, potable or potable aqua. Um, this, this is just um, germicidal tablets. Uh, you put them in water, you wait a few minutes, and it purifies your water. It doesn't purify taste, definitely doesn't purify like uh, sediment or any debris at all, but it does make the water safe to drink. So that's this is just a backup that's coming with me. Um, and then I also bring just an Apple charging cable and then a micro USB for my headlamp. This is a small toothbrush. Uh, this is pretty nasty and old. It just folds in half. I've been using it for <laughs> a lot of years. Boom, done. Uh, this is, if you don't have this yet, you need to just go buy this right now. This is the Flextail Gear Tiny Pump. This thing costs like 30 bucks on Amazon. It's an air pump for your sleeping mattress and it only weighs three ounces. And then if you hold down, it's also uh, on the button, it's also a light that goes up to 400 lumens. So you can, you know, hang this in your tent. It's nice to have a second light because if you do go like say on a night hike, you can hang this in your tent ahead of time, right? And you turn it on and then you go hike. And then you're wondering where your tent is because now you're lost. Well, now you can see your tent off in the distance because you've hung a light inside your tent at night. It's really cool. Also makes really good pictures if you're looking to take really cool night shots of your tent. So that's coming with me for sure. Absolutely love this thing. And then I always bring some tenacious tape. This is just uh, a highly recommended by me, uh, just tape. And this will repair any type of nylon, like your, let's say your tent gets a hole in it, or your jacket gets a hole in it, or your air pad gets a hole in it, something. This will help repair that, so that's coming with me. Now the gear that I'm bringing is actually a lot heavier than what I would normally bring on backpacking trips. As a matter of fact, I'm also gonna be bringing a bike. I'm bringing an e-bike, actually. No way. But what's You're wrong with, why can't I bring an e-bike? An, an e-bike? An electric bike. It's awesome. With the, with the batteries? Yes, with the batteries. Have you seen one of these before? 
heavy. Yeah, this is awesome. This is by a company called Turbo Rant. This thing goes 20 miles an hour without breaking a sweat. Up to 60 miles, super long range on a single battery charge. It's got a Samsung 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery, 750 watt motor. It's got an LCD display. I've gone over a hundred miles on this hog. A hundred miles. I've had this thing through sand. I've had it in water. I'm sure it could probably handle the mountains too. I bet you it could. How, how many ounces? Uh, that's not important at all. How many ounces this, this, <laughs> this bike is. You know what, now that I think about it, I probably shouldn't bring it because they don't, they won't let me bring it on the airplane, I don't think. Because of the battery. Right, the battery. But you should check out this bike company. They are awesome. I will put a link in the description below. Thank you guys, thank you Turborant for sending me this bike. Super cool, love it. You guys should check them out. And then this is the headlamp I'm bringing. This is the Nightcore uh, NU25, I think it is. Rechargeable, like 300 and some lumens, red light, awesome headlamp. Uh, so that's definitely coming with me as well. Um, and that's everything that's going inside of my Diddy bag. Now my Diddy bag will end up somewhere near the top of my backpack. Okay, and the last thing that will go inside of my backpack, this is the Nemo Hornet Elite. Uh, very expensive tent, a uh, little bit overkill, but it's awesome. And it only weighs two pounds with the poles included. So that's super cool. So this will go in next, and I'll just kind of shove this in here wherever it goes. And I don't put the poles inside of my tent because most of your tents will pack down pretty good, pretty small, so you should be able to cram them inside your tent. And then just make sure it's near the top so you can grab it when you get to camp. Okay, now everything left, this is the stuff that's gonna go on the outside of my backpack. So this um, is my chair. Yes, I bring a chair when I go backpacking. This is the Helinox Chair Zero. Um, it's a one pound chair. You will be like the greatest person at camp when you bring this. They will make fun of you at first for bringing a chair. But when you get to camp, they're gonna be like, dude, can I uh, sit in your chair? And you're gonna be like, no, I carried it. So then I like this on the top and I like it on the outside because let's say I'm taking a break, you know, we're stopping for lunch, we're doing something. There's my chair right there. I can just grab it, set it up, it's good to go. Next, that's gonna go on the outside of my pack are gonna be my tent poles. Uh, these just go on the outside of my pack because they fit right in a water bottle pouch So they'll fit here, but before I do that though I will put my tent stakes inside of the bag for my tent poles But I wanted to show you which tent stakes I'm bringing so this is a tent stake that comes with a lot of tents These types of tent stakes tend to bend easily. Uh, they don't hold in the ground very well So I always replace my tent stakes with these MSR groundhog stakes. Uh, these are awesome. I've had these in sand, I've had them in dirt, um, I've had them in really rocky soil. Um, I've had these in snow. These actually work as uh, stakes that will uh, work as snow stakes because you can lay them flat in the ground in the snow and then bury them down and they will hold like cement. Uh, they're a little small for it, but they do work. So these are my go-to stakes and I don't get the mini version of these, I get the regular version. The weight difference is nominal and they're gonna hold better. So I recommend the regular version. You know, throw these in your uh, tent bag. It only comes with six, but I do bring an extra one of the cheap ones with me just in case I lose a tent stake or sometimes a lot of the tents that I bring will require an extra tent stake that you never thought it would require. So I throw one of those in there just to have it. So this will go on the outside of my pack. And then this is new for me. This is the Grail Ultralight Water Purifier. Um, I talked about this in a recent video. I will link that right up here. Never used this before. I'm really psyched to try it out. Uh, it's just a water purifier. It's not a filter. The difference is a filter, like your Sawyer Squeeze, your Catadine Bee Freeze, that will filter for protozoa and bacteria, but it doesn't filter viruses. This will actually filter viruses as well. Now that's not really necessary for where I'm going because I'm in the, uh, the United States and so we don't have to worry about that here. But if you are an international traveler, this is super awesome because you can uh, have, not have to worry about the viruses getting in your water. So this just pops out, scoop up dirty water, loosen the cap so there's a little bit of airflow. Uh, you push this filter, the purifier down into it like this. And then you can take the cap off and everything inside here is uh, purified water. So you can drink out of it, you can pour it into a container, whatever you want to do. This will go on the outside of my pack in a water bottle holder. Um, I also will have a like a gas station water bottle, like a smart water bottle that I totally forgot to bring out here. 
uh, but it's just a one liter bottle. I'll put that in the other water bottle pocket just to have a little bit extra capacity. So that way when I get to camp, I'll at least have the ability to carry a little bit more water or while I'm hiking. Also new for me, uh, brand new is uh, this fishing rod that I just bought. Now this is not a backpacking fishing rod, but this is a travel rod. And I am not a fly fisherman and I don't plan on practicing fly fishing on my first fishing trip while backpacking. So um, I'm cast spinning reel kind of guy here in Wisconsin that's really popular. So uh, this is a, if you're into this sort of thing, this is a St. Croix rod made right here in Wisconsin. And it just comes apart and puts back together. So when you get to camp, I now have a six and a half foot uh, lightweight fishing rod. So this rod weighs uh, right at about four and a half, five ounces all in with uh, with everything here. And then this weighs a little bit more. This weighs, I don't know, maybe three, four ounces more. All right, now the back of the backpack, what's gonna go back here? I've already put my uh, food bag line, my bear line in there. But what's really important is also going to be to have your accessible medical kit. So uh, this is the medical adventure medical kit 0.5. Um, it's the one I recommend. It's always done the job for me. It's not like a trauma kit, but I don't even know how to use a trauma kit. That's why I would never bring a trauma kit. So this is gonna go into the back here. And I like this accessible in the back because if I ever get hurt and somebody's with me, I could say, hey, go grab my medical kit. I can tell them exactly where it is and they should be able to see it right away because it's highly visible right there. Then my poop kit will go with me. So this is just some toilet paper in a Ziploc bag. And then I have a trowel here. This is the Deuce trowel. Um, not my favorite trowel, but it works. It's not my favorite trowel because it hurts my hand when I'm digging. Some people say to do it backwards. I've never had good luck, but it's a trowel. Um, so this will go for easy access for obvious reasons in the back of my backpack. All right, next is, I'm just starting to bring this on every trip. This is a wag bag. If you don't know what a wag bag is, this is like a bag you poop in. <laughs> You wrap it up and you pack it out. So uh, this is going with me because I've been to so many places lately where people just have been disgusting uh, and there's just human stuff everywhere. And I don't wanna be one of those people. So this is coming with me just in case I absolutely need it. And then this is a fillet knife. I do plan on cooking some fish while I'm out there cause I will be fishing. There's a lot of trout in the lakes that we're going to. So this is the Gerber controller. It's just a foldable fillet knife. I like this so far, I've never used it yet, but I like it so far because it's got that really rubbery grip here in these gray areas. Uh, and that's gonna be nice because when you're, if you've ever filleted fish, it gets kind of messy. So uh, that's kind of nice to have that extra grip. Uh, this will go on the outside as well, right here. My bear spray, this will actually be holstered on me. Now this is not the bear spray I'm bringing. This is actually expired. So I just ordered some new stuff. Uh, with the holster, so that will be holstered somewhere on my belt. And then I will be bringing some sort of a lure kit like this. Now I will shove this in the back of my pack like this. Uh, this is a uh, Garmin InReach Mini. This is a satellite communication device. It allows me to connect to my family. It allows me to push an SOS button on here and call emergency services. Um, if something does go south, all without a cell phone signal, it connects directly to satellites. So it's very, very cool. And I can use this Bluetooth with my cell phone so I can actually just text from my phone and it acts like I'm just texting my family. So awesome peace of mind for me, for my family, sends my location. Very cool, a little expensive, around 350 bucks, but if you backpack a lot or if you're in areas where there's just a lot of like no cell phone signal and uh, you wanna have peace of mind, highly recommend this. And I'll usually put this somewhere like this on a carabiner so it's hanging. It's got access to the satellites and I can hear it as I'm hiking, if it starts dinging in my ear, if somebody's trying to text me or whatever. Oh, and one more thing, this is my ground cloth for my tent. This is just a piece of Tyvek, pre-cut. Um, I bought this on Amazon. I'll link it in the description. A lot of people ask me how I got it so soft and you know, the, it's not like hard, like you'd normally see Tyvek. They sent it to me like that. But I've also heard that you can get your, um, Tyvek to not be stiff by actually throwing it in the washing machine on the delicate cycle for a few times. So I don't know, try that, see if it works. So that's gonna go into the back as well because that's gonna be one of the first things that comes out when I get to camp. And it's also nice to be able to lay out when you get to camp because then you can put all your gear on it. You can kind of see what you got. So nice to have access to that. And my trekking poles, I'll just be using as I'm hiking. 
Um, I'll, and when I'm not, I'll throw them in a water bottle pocket on either side. Uh, these are the Gossamer Gear, I think they're the LT5s. I've been using these for about a year and I love them. Sometimes I take one, sometimes I take two, sometimes I don't take them at all. Uh, on this particular trip, I will be taking them because we're gonna be hiking through some rocky terrain and I don't balance very well, okay? I fall a lot, so these are gonna be helpful. And then my sunglasses, uh, <laughs> I get asked a lot about my sunglasses. I don't know why, but I do. These are Oakley Holbrooks, so I love them. That's what I bring for sunglasses. Uh, one more thing that I thought might interest you. This is just a document storage tube that I found on Amazon. You can throw your fishing poles in there if they break down, so that way when you stick them inside of your uh, bag for travel, they don't break. Oh, also, um, for my camera and for garbage, I also bring probably five or six gallon Ziploc bags. I put them inside of my food bag with me, and then you know any leftover garbage that I've got will go inside of a Ziploc bag. If I have to use my WAG bag, I'll throw that inside of here as a double bag insurance that, okay, I think you know why. And then also, if it starts to rain, I can put my expensive camera gear inside of a Ziploc bag and then shove that down inside of my backpack somewhere so that it doesn't get wet. All right, guys, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. Also, subscribe for more. Hit me up on Instagram, which I will put right here. Make sure you hit the bell notification so I can send you a video every time it's released, and I will see you on the next one.